what's good Josh boy Ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna check out super showdown disaster Goldberg versus the Undertaker now this is another show that involved the Undertaker that uh well not show but well actually show because I didn't watch the super showdown uh that year did not watch it I forgot what the situation was but uh, I think I was busy I couldn't it's like around the time when the Undertaker was having these overseas shows were involved in some of these overseas shows i didn't actually watch the show itself so maybe it was the wrestling gods above blessing me with not seeing this <laughs> seeing this for myself with my own eyes i actually want to say this is probably before that i really started producing like doing wrestling content on my page um uh, as well yeah before i really just started doing wrestling content on my page in general like i was doing it here and there but you know now my page is turning primarily into a wrestling uh channel um so this was right before that time period for me um but yeah the wrestling gods best bless me to not see this match as well i just saw the clips and the highlights and everyone else talking about how bad it was i watched the undertaker documentary and he talked about how bad it was so i was spared for actually seeing this so uh yeah man this is just one of those type of things where we're gonna talk about this uh i know you guys wanted me to talk about it we checked out wrestling bios um the other video of the dx versus the brothers of destruction so you know as you guys y'all wanted me to check this out and you guys overwhelmingly said yes please check this one out so that's what i'm gonna do appreciate it. god damn it it's playing before you guys can even see it but appreciate all love and support man let's get right into this video man Oh, I like how he masked it up with the Goldberg's theme and the Undertaker's theme. I like that. That's cool. That's cool how he did that. That is very, very cool. There was a time when The Undertaker <clears throat> versus Bill Goldberg would have been a really big deal. Yep. These were two titans of a bygone era, an era where everyone was watching pro wrestling, and an era where the hot topic in the business centered around Monday nights and the battle between both men's respective employers. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Taker versus Goldberg was a dream match or anything like that. It was always Sting versus Taker and Steve Austin versus Goldberg. That yep, he he's spot on. People wanted to see Undertaker versus Sting people also wanted to see stone cold steve austin versus goldberg we never really got that that fans would discuss but that doesn't take away from the fact that at one point both the undertaker and goldberg were main eventing episodes of raw and nitro and they were two big draws for their companies during the fabled monday night wars I think 1998 would have been the prime year for a potential Undertaker vs Goldberg match if the impossible happened in WCW mm -hmm. and the WWF co-promoted shows. It was never gonna happen and I know it was never gonna happen but just for the sake of fantasy booking, 1998 was the year Goldberg became unstoppable while mm -hmm. the dead man was throwing dudes off the top of sails and slowly morphing into a much more sinister version of his character towards the end of the year. That was then though and that was when both guys were on on top of their game and that's when fan interest would have been at an all-time high almost 20 years later the that's WWE crazy. decided to book the match for one of their Saudi Arabia shows Super Showdown 2019 and the match was absolutely destroyed by fans and critics while The Undertaker himself called it almost catastrophic we all quickly learned that having these one-off dream matches from titans of the past may not always be the best idea when things mm -hmm. went south very early on and you know in a way both guys legacies also suffered a little due to the match taking place let's see how it all went down this is the goldberg versus undertaker match at Oof. super showdown 2019 and it's one of those things where these guys were way past their prime the undertaker's trying to find that at this point that that last hoorah goldberg still trying to you know see if he got it newsflash he didn't have it not like he used to and that and that has nothing to do with with who they are and their legacy in the past it's just when you get older you can't move as much it's it's the room for error as you get older especially in the wrestling business is so it's even smaller because back in the past 
you know, you're younger, you're more, you know, you're more buff, you got more energy, you can take a, a bump or two. When you get older and your body is not what it used to be, the bumps you used to be able to take, that bump now could be something that could possibly end your career forever. So it's just, we get why they did it for the bottom dollar, but it 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 did not work out. It did not work out at all. The Saudi Arabia shows that the WWE now produce involve a lot of money and it's no secret that the company and the wrestlers who perform are paid very handsomely for these trips to the Middle East. Yep. There's been quite a lot of debate about these shows and it's not something I want to discuss in today's video, but I do believe that Goldberg vs Undertaker wouldn't have happened if the Saudi shows didn't exist. They there seems to be have. a desire to put on big surprising matches at these events and who requests these matches doesn't really matter. All we need to know is that the opportunity presented itself sell for Goldberg to wrestle The Undertaker in 2019 overseas, and both guys agreed to do the match. Taker's last match before Super Showdown was at Crown Jewel 2018, another event that was held in Saudi Arabia, and a match that also featured the return of Shawn Michaels. Mm -hmm. The Brothers of Destruction took on D-Generation X in a match that can only be described as disappointing, but I plan on covering that one in the future. The Which Brothers took a loss seen. on this night, and the bout received quite a lot of criticism for various reasons, but honestly, it was nowhere near the match people thought it was gonna be. Taker himself described it as a train wreck and a a total disaster. At this time, The Undertaker was a little obsessed about having one good match before like retiring say. for good, so he was continuing to wrestle sporadically at big events even when his body was telling him it was time to let it go. Taker did not appear at WrestleMania 35, breaking a long-term WrestleMania tradition due to Vince not booking him on the show and instead deciding to have Taker appear the next night on Raw, but The Undertaker said that he felt he should have been part of WrestleMania and he should have been in the ring during the event and when watching Taker's Last Ride documentary, you can absolutely tell how disappointed he was with not being part of the show. I'm going to be honest with you. If you haven't seen The Undertaker's Last Ride documentary, it's been out for a while. Go watch it, bro. Just to finally get an introspective of the guy behind the character was actually really interesting to see. Because you never really saw that from The Undertaker. He was the one guy for the longest time he kept kayfabe alive he stayed the character in public eyes so it was really interesting to see that yearn for him to just have one more good match and ultimately we end up getting it in the most unlikely situations with uh aj styles that was his last i guess you could say sort of match but i love that 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 shit was fun to watch and it was just a good send off for the undertaker um, so, you know, uh, granted, I wish he could have had that in front of a crowd, um, but it's very good documentary. Go watch it. You will not be disappointed. Still, Taker appeared on Raw the next night and he took out Elias. He got backstage and he talked about how excited he was for this next Saudi Arabia show. Taker was going to wrestle once again and he wanted to get redemption for the D-Generation X match. Mm-hmm. Yep. This was all about redemption for him. Bill Goldberg had become a special attraction in world wrestling entertainment since coming back in 2016. Fans weren't overly enamored with Goldberg becoming the Universal Champion the following year, and no. fans who didn't live through the Goldberg streak during WCW's heyday couldn't see what the big deal was with Bill Goldberg. To be fair, there were also fans from the 90s who didn't care all that much about Bill, but nonetheless, he got great ovations to start with, but the novelty wore off for a lot of people by the time Bill dropped the Universal title to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 33. The following year, Goldberg was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame with many people thinking he had now retired from in-ring competition for good. It isn't always a rule of the thumb of course, but generally speaking, a wrestler would hang up their boots after getting uh -huh. their induction. To be fair to Goldberg and to not jump on the he only did it for the money bandwagon, he did state previously that he could wrestle again in the future and he never flat out said he was retired, but the Saudi show he and Taker would wrestle at may have already been in the pipeline, who mm -hmm. knows. Goldberg's a guy though that I feel modern fans rip into way too much and I think a lot of his criticisms are unjustified. He's not the one booking the matches and he's not the one telling people he wants to win championships. Yes, it's disheartening seeing an older guy completely destroy younger talent when we all know he's gonna disappear again very soon, but that's really on the guys that write the shows. We also And I, I get his I get his point. I have ripped into Goldberg. Not per se 
I guess you can say the man himself. It was just the booking decisions. I just felt like it was we it was like they were trying to book him as if it was the Monday Night Wars. And it was like you can't do that now. I know that's his gimmick, but you can't do that now, especially with the younger talent you're supposed to be trying to get over. What they did with him and the fiend was fucking atrocious. They they effectively killed the fiend at that point. Bray Wyatt. It was done. I, I couldn't care less. Hell, what they did with uh Kevin Owens, his title reign, how it ended uh, due to Goldberg. I, I wasn't a big fan of that. You know, I don't have a problem with maybe him getting uh one more title opportunity. Um honestly, he should have got the the title if you guys remember when he came to w, uh, WWE the first time. They should have been, he should have been a world champion for a longer period of time. But around that time, Triple H uh, had had pretty much Monday Night Raw sold up with Evolution. So that's when they really should have booked him strong. Now, I don't know. And just seeing it now, well, when it, you know, when it happened, it, it's just, I think fans didn't have a problem with him. It's just the booking decisions and how younger talent would just get fed to him. And it's just like, for what? He's not going to be here that much. But I get what he's saying. A lot of people definitely did rip into him. I was one of those individuals, man. You hear a lot that Goldberg's too limited in the ring and his matches are too short. Trust me, what we want to see is short Goldberg matches. Yeah. Only a select few have been able to carry Goldberg to longer, more involved matches. His high impact, intense, and adrenaline field encounters that end in a matter of minutes were always the most fun to watch. Yeah. And those kind of matches were exactly what worked for Bill. I get it too, wrestling fans have moved on and wrestling has moved on. I said before that the format of WCW Nitro and the quick pace of WCW Nitro really suited Goldberg's style as a character and an in-ring performer, but wrestling had evolved when Goldberg came back to WWE in 2016 and fans didn't necessarily demand more in my opinion, but they were used to main inventors having long and epic encounters at the end of shows. It can be argued that Goldberg's main strengths as a performer didn't really fit in with this new era of pro wrestling good point that's a very good point Undertaker said it was Triple H who called him and asked if he would like to wrestle Goldberg in Saudi Arabia. Taker thought it sounded like a great match on paper and at this juncture of his career he wouldn't have many more opportunities to work with someone of that magnitude for the first time ever. Taker was excited for the match, I'm sure he was excited for the money too, but he said he was excited that the match built itself with the names of the competitors being all that was needed to draw fans yeah, in. Yeah of course. And Goldberg was excited to give fans in a different country a look at the old Bill Goldberg. Taker was absolutely right too. There was practically no build up for the match whatsoever. You the match was announced need on to. TV. Taker made an appearance on the June 3rd, 2019 episode of Raw. Goldberg and Taker then shared the ring briefly on the following episode of SmackDown. And that was pretty much it. It's crazy. On Raw, the dead man asked fans if they knew what it was like to come face to face with death for the first time because that's exactly what Goldberg's going to go through later in the week. Taker said he doesn't want to see the family man Goldberg that's been showing up to WWE recently. The Phenom wants the unstoppable mythical icon. He wants the old Bill Goldberg. And if Bill brings anything less, then this first match between he and the Phenom is going to be his last. Taker then says he plans on claiming Goldberg's soul for all eternity, and he ends the promo by saying Goldberg's next. <laughs> on SmackDown, Goldberg said he's waited nearly 20 years to experience what it would be like to share the ring with The Undertaker. And he He's finally going to get what he wants later this week at Super Showdown. He appreciates Undertaker's advice in regarding to leaving the family man behind. Goldberg says he doesn't want the family man anywhere near Taker because he'd probably fall short. So Bill does indeed plan on leaving that family man at home. Goldberg guarantees that the Undertaker's going to get the guy who the Phenom watched for 20 years. The Goldberg that made the Undertaker wonder would I be able to stack up against that. The ass kicking Goldberg that Undertaker requested is exactly what the Undertaker's going to get because the Undertaker's next to rest in peace the and here's the thing about this before we finish up i just wanted to make this point i was a huge goldberg fan just growing up seeing him i i was one of those people that did it'd be cool to see goldberg versus stone cold i thought that would be cool. two ball guys going at it 
that are over in dip, different companies, let's get it going. So I don't want the people to think I've always hated Goldberg. It's, and I don't even hate him now. It's just I hated the booking creative of what they were having him do. Because obviously he's he, he wasn't going to be the same guy we grew up. You know what I'm saying? Grew up watching. So, you know, I'm, I was always, hell, I'm, when he came back the second time, I was like, all right, this is pretty fucking cool. You know what I'm saying? This was cool. Hell, when he beat Brock Lesnar in like 16 seconds uh, at that one year. I don't know if it was that Survivor Series. I think it may have been Survivor. I don't know. I don't think it was Survivor Series. I forgot what pay-per-view. Let me know down below. I was shocked. It was just crazy to see that, bro. Like, it was just a crazy situation. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I don't want people to think I just outright hate the guy. That's not even the situation, man. I wish the best for him. You know, it's just booking-wise and the decisions that Vince McMahon decided to go with, I was not a big fan of. And it just happened to involve Goldberg. Lights then go out in the arena, and when they come back on, the phenom standing there right behind Goldberg. Goldberg laughs as he turns around. I do the remember watching forces this. his opponent to look at death right in the eye, and Goldberg doesn't back down. The lights go off again, and the Undertaker's vanished. Goldberg appreciates the showmanship, and he tells Taker to bring his jockstrap and tighten it up because this Friday, Undertaker's in for a ride. Uh, he was so in for a ride, all right. Into this show in Saudi Arabia is all about these two legends of the past finally colliding in an epic encounter, with The Undertaker wanting the old Goldberg, and Goldberg saying his WCW run was something that made Taker question his own abilities. In a different time, and maybe in a different place, this could have been something, but you gotta call a spade a spade here, too. Yeah. The incredibly short build up and the WWE trying to build this like the pinnacle of both men's careers simply didn't work because there was simply Simply no time nor effort put into the journey. Taker and Goldberg spoke of unstoppable careers and turning back the clock for this epic one time only battle, but the WWE simply had no interest in selling the story to their viewers. Mm -hmm. For fans of Goldberg in the 90s, there could have been something here. For fans of the Monday Night War, there was definitely more story to explore, but the build up was facts. totally rushed and it felt like the WWE just wanted to deliver on a match commitment and then call it a day. With how the match turned out, though, it was probably for the best. The bad match would have been seriously amplified if WWE took a few months to tell a story. This is very true. If they actually would have took time to build this match, uh, yeah, bro. Um, <laughs> this definitely would have uh, ended off. This, this, yeah, it would have been even worse. Dead ass. This would have been a lot worse. Like the criticism, because now people would have invested their time. Probably people who hadn't watched wrestling. Oh, I want to see these guys go. I had never saw it growing up and then they would have seen it or they were like oh well this is why i don't watch wrestling this is trash boom 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 it just would have been a lot worse between these let's admit it aging superstars but it's quite shocking how little was put into the build-up we got and this is a fine example of why many fans feel the saudi shows aren't canon if you completely mm -hmm. skipped WWE television the week beginning June the 3rd, 2009, then you'd be absolutely none the wiser in regards to Taker versus Goldberg from both a build-up and match perspective. Nothing advanced before that week, and nothing changed after that week. Mm-hmm. Taker versus Goldberg's the final match of the night, and Goldberg's entrance is up first. Before the security guards open up his locker room door, Goldberg headbutts it as usual, but then Bill walks out and we can see a cut on his forehead. Oh as he continues boy. walking down the corridor, his eyes get more and more bloodshot. Bill would reveal on the Pat McAfee show that he gave himself a concussion by headbutting that door, and he didn't know where he was and he had oh no idea what was going on as he made his entrance to face The Undertaker. Oh. Imagine you giving yourself a concussion, bro, before you even get to the damn ring. And you just out there on autopilot. You're out there on a prayer. Oh, my God. This was doomed from the start. <laughs> he gets to the ring, and by this time, he does seem a little bit better. I sure didn't notice anything wrong here except the bloodshot eyes, but I just put that down to tiredness after the flight. And of course, the cut on his head was unmissable, but he gets in the ring, and he awaits the dead man. 
I know a lot of people won't watch these shows out of principle and you know that's completely up to you but if you didn't see Super Showdown then you honestly missed one of the Undertaker's better entrances complete with torch carrying druids, a line of 20 coffins, flame shooting up into oh, the night damn. sky and Holy Undertaker shit. appearing from these lights that look like some sort of portal. The two damn, are not that in the ring, cool they hell. square up to each other, Goldberg Holy. tells Taker it's time to rest in peace. Undertaker punches Goldberg and we immediately see the spear. Goldberg lines up another spear trying to end this one as early as possible. He hits it but the Undertaker kicks out and it looks like Bill's gonna have to do a little more work. The dead man sits up and he manages to get Goldberg in position for a choke slam, but Goldberg rolls through and he locks in a knee bar. This stays in for a little while and things so far haven't been all that bad. It then goes downhill rapidly when Goldberg charges at the dead man. The Undertaker dodges the attack and Goldberg smacks his head on the ring post, busting him wide open oh while concussing God. Goldberg once again. Now, again, to be fair to Goldberg, ever since he came back to WWE, the company had been using these bigger LED ring posts that you see right here. Sometimes they had VR cameras attached to them, other times they were used purely for cosmetic reasons. But Goldberg did state that the ring setup was slightly different for this Saudi show, and I think he was directly referring to the ring posts. It's an excuse, I know, but keep in mind Goldberg didn't wrestle as much as everyone else. And also keep in mind, he already messed oh, himself up before man. making it to the Jeez. ring and he probably didn't notice the ring post until it was way too late. Anyway, Goldberg's now bleeding badly and the look in his eyes tells us he's pretty much out on his feet. Oh, he tries to bring God. the fight to Taker and he's got his wits about him enough to allow Undertaker to perform old school. But the referee is checking on him immediately afterwards. Goldberg said that he told the referee a few times that he was fine but then seconds later he would wonder how he ended up in a wrestling ring. Oh Taker signals God. for the choke slam, but Goldberg turns his back to rest on the oh top rope. You can hear God. Mike Yoda again ask Goldberg if he's okay and the dead man has to stall a little before going for the choke slam. Oh Goldberg my. takes the move. <laughs> Taker looks directly at Kyoda, maybe looking for further instruction. Undertaker hits the tombstone and this was Goldberg's oh. chance to stay down if he was yeah. unable to continue, but Bill kicks out a two. It isn't even a long two count, he's back on his feet before the Undertaker. Still, watch that tombstone back in slow motion or frame by frame and you'll see Goldberg take all the impact oh on his head. The dead man lays in a few right hands and he brings his opponent to the corner. Oh. Even Corey Graves says Goldberg's just running on instinct at the moment as it becomes clearer and clearer that oh. he's not all there. Taker and here's the thing, I don't want to see him like this. I don't want to see nobody injured like this. You feel me? I'm just, you know, this is why I stay. I'm, I may not be a fan of how someone's booked or their character on television, but I wouldn't want to see them go out like this. Considering, like, you know what I'm saying, how I used to watch them as a kid growing up. I don't want to see them bro, just in this type of state. Jesus continues to gingerly attack Goldberg while trying to give him time this in between his strikes to get his wits about him. Goldberg gets launched into the ropes and both men go down after a double clothesline. The two then trade punches with Undertaker getting the upper hand. Goldberg then takes Snake Eyes and the Undertaker lines up his jumping clothesline but Goldberg counters with a spear. Bill then signals for the jackhammer and then this oh, happens. No. Goldberg's gonna be able I've to seen do this to Oh my god, oh my god. This was scary and it could yeah. have been so much worse. Oh Luckily Goldberg's god. bicep provided enough cushion for the Undertaker's neck but still that yeah. amount of weight being placed oh. on the neck and shoulders combined with the age of the oh. Undertaker and his mounting injuries really could have led to an absolute disaster but Facts. thankfully he was okay. Goldberg covers Taker after the botched jackhammer but the phenom kicks out. Goldberg then goes for a tombstone but he doesn't have the strength to lift Taker up and there's a complete hush over the stadium yep. here. This was bad. With mercy, the Undertaker hits a choke slam and Goldberg can't even jump up at this oh, point. Oh yeah, that choke slam just looked bad. For those who don't know, the choke slam is a is a move that requires the opponent to jump into it as well. That's what gives it that extra oomph when he hits it you got to jump into him lifting you up but he didn't jump so the undertaker just had to try to lift him up as much as he could Taker wins via pinfall and the look on the undertaker's face yeah, afterwards it. says it all this match was not the redemption undertaker was seeking after the degeneration x match this was even worse than the dx match 
Undertaker said he felt frustrated, disappointed, and worried. He described the botched jackhammer like an electrical charge that went through his whole body, oh setting gosh. off all nerve impulses to all his current injuries at once. And he said the move was just a few small inches from being absolutely catastrophic. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus. Uh. Undertaker stayed relatively silent about the match until the last ride documentary aired on WWE yeah. Network. Goldberg took to social media to explain what happened. He felt he let his fans down, yet he also acknowledged that fans wanted to see him fail. Goldberg then admitted that he thought about the match way too much and he was worried about the Undertaker match defining his whole career. He wanted to have another shot in order to redeem himself and he would end up doing just that. For The Undertaker though, things weren't so straightforward. The Phenom was already coming to terms with his own career coming to an end and he was already questioning if he should keep going even before Super Showdown. But after the Goldberg match, the dead man found himself in a real bad spot both physically and mentally. He came out of the match with some serious back pain and during the flight home, he wondered if it was time to finally give it all up. He thought about his wife and he thought about his children. He wasn't sure if he was to blame for what happened at Super Showdown yeah. and he wondered if things wouldn't have went the way they did if he was still the Undertaker of old. So the Goldberg bout ended up giving the Phenom a lot to think about when he got back to the States. He'd already agreed to wrestle in the Extreme Rules pay-per-view later in the year and he thought it might be best to cancel the match. Taker, being the company man he is, ended up working the Extreme Rules pay-per-view in the end, a tag team match where he teamed oh, up with yeah. Roman Reigns to battle Drew McIntyre and Shane I McMahon. Do remember and this. the match turned out pretty damn good. Yeah. But Taker told Vince McMahon after the match that the time had come and he was ready to say goodbye to WWE. I forgot all about that. That actually was a book. I remember now. That actually was a good match. That was a good tag team match. That shit was fun. That shit was actually fun. I remember that, man. It was it was a it was a good it was a good like good thing for Undertaker because one, he didn't have to carry as much. But two, it just it was like I guess you can say one of those redemption matches for him. But it was definitely pretty fun. That was a good tag team match with him and Roman. Both guys would go on to get their redemption in singles mm -hmm. bouts, with Goldberg having a much better match against Dolph Ziggler, though he did end up defeating The Fiend at Super Showdown oh, 2020 brother. for the Universal Belt, giving Goldberg even more criticism to deal with. And as for Undertaker, he would face AJ Styles in a Boneyard match. That match has an interesting story in itself as the WWE done their best to deal with the restrictions placed upon the company due to the coronavirus pandemic. I'll cover that match in the future for sure, but in short, the dead man ended up very happy with the Boneyard match that and how was he fun. quite literally rode off into the night when all was said and done. People that love to fun. point the finger at Goldberg and blame him for everything that happened because yeah. it's the easy thing to do, but is it really our place as fans to tell the guys in the ring how they're supposed to do their job, you know? Accidents happen, yeah. and yes, the Super Showdown match had more than one accident and that's what makes it stick out like a sore thumb, yeah. but we're not the ones in the ring at 53 and 54 years old, dealing with injuries and concussions, trying to lift guys in the air while trying to maintain some sort of resemblance of safety. It was a bad match for sure, one of the worst to ever main event a WWE show, and I know the thing to do is to blame Goldberg for injuring guys and all that stuff, but nobody wants to see guys get hurt or end yeah. up in a bad way because of a fucking wrestling match. And yes, I know, people are instantly going to bring up Bret Hart versus Goldberg, and there's a point to be made there too. But mm -hmm. in my opinion, the problem with this match was the fact that it got booked in the first place. Goldberg versus Undertaker in 2019 should not have happened. Both guys simply were too far gone at this point to wrestle each other, and both guys needed younger wrestlers to carry the load a little. In 1998 or 1999, fans would have loved to have seen Goldberg versus Undertaker, or Goldberg versus anyone in WWF for that matter mm -hmm. in 2019 though and uh, not so much but that's going to do it for this one guys thank you very much for watching and take care now this was a this was a good video man this was a dope one I like his points that he makes uh, uh, not uh, talks about makes um, in, in response to the criticism Goldberg does receive once again I have been one of those people that you know just I didn't want to see Goldberg on my screen or nothing like that and I don't hate the guy, I never did. I just did not like the booking decisions. Once again, this whole situation shouldn't have even really happened, to be honest with you. The match never should have taken place. It just shouldn't have. They were just two guys way past their prime. 
you know, the matches that we end up getting after this with Roman and The Undertaker tag teaming, that actually worked because it's more so having someone younger that can carry most of the load because their bodies just can't go that much. Like, that's just what it is. Like, your body, after so many years of <laughs> the physical torture that you put it through to entertain us, at some point it's going to say, no, I can't, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So, respect to both men for legendary careers and what they've brought and done for the industry when it comes to wrestling. I will never take that away from them. And they will always be legends and goats when it comes to, to the wrestling world. But I think we can all agree this match should have never happened especially at that show especially at that time it, it, it shouldn't have happened but ultimately it did so comment down below let me know did you guys ever watch this match and what was your thoughts and opinions when it happened and when it was over how did you feel about it you let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 100k i appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace